right, welcome to the January HR Business Service Committee meeting of the Duluth School Board. We'll start out on our agenda, as you can find on board book. We have no guest presentations for this meeting, so we're going to move right into the departmental report, and we'll start with the human resource report. We have a summary from my page here. From Director Severance, where we can see our staffing updates of new hires in certified and non-certified, including retirements, resignations, and leave of absences. We are happy to report that the HR team has hired a new human resource assistant to support benefits. That's Joe Perich. So we welcome him here. Um, we are still looking for a replacement for our HR management posi manager position, but I know we're working hard on that. The HR staff is working very diligently on process mapping related to leaves of absences, um, payroll processing, and Skyward. Um, and the team continues to work on improvements and looking for long-term change. So that is all great. The benefits team has just completed the non-discrimination testing, which was due December 31st of 2022. And I think that has to look at pay equity between genders. Correct? Mm -hmm. And that's something we have to do pretty regularly. The next compliance item is the Affordable Care Act reporting process. That will be due the end of February. And we are hosting two more retirement sessions in January, the 12th, and we have 18 employees signed up. If I'm remembering correctly, then staff have in, is it February where they are going, where they talk about whether or not they're going to retire that year? February 1st. February 1st, which allows us time to get positions up and posted so we can be more efficient in hiring our certified and non-certified staff. The only question I had about our HR um, report was, I know that we had some um, turnover at SPED teachers at Denfeld. Have we gotten that straightened out? Is that, do we have that team okay. supported? It, I think it's, it, actually we got an uh, email from the team just before break saying that they, they really have appreciated the support from the Denfeld administration and the district administration that they feel that they're in a much, much different place. Things are Great. very positive. I don't, I'm not trying to paint it with no, rose-colored glasses, but it was one of the most positive emails we've, and thankful emails we've received. We were very grateful from, from the team there, uh, but also through their hard work and some support from our team. So. That's great news. You might want to print that and stick it in a drawer for you know. <laughs> when the other emails come. Um, I just want to take a minute and point out again that we have about 20 positions open for our custodial staff, and that remains to be a challenge for our facility. So um, hopefully sooner rather than later we will um, get some more custodians for our buildings. And I would say we're hopeful with the new contract having gone through that that might create better situation as far as pay for the custodial positions that we're resulting. And this is the, that's the boiler and the fire? Fireman, which, and, fireman and oilers. That, that, that contract, right? The contract that was approved last month. And, and that had some, done some reshuffling with the way positions look, correct? correct. It, it changed the wage in some positions and, and I'm, I'm very hopeful that we are able to get some interest and hire some people to help us out. Great, thank you. That's great news. So are there any questions for human resources this month? Great, so let's move on to business services and we'll start out with a report from the finance department. Okay, uh, finance is past the audit now and we're just doing some year end cleanup and already starting to um, meet with different departments, grant departments, and going to be meeting quarterly to go over reporting. And we are starting budget meetings tomorrow. That's so just so we're starting budget meetings in January to make our decision and build our budget for June. Correct. Awesome. Yes. And to answer any current year budget questions okay. they have. So I'm looking forward to that. We just, we're starting that process tomorrow. And yes, yeah, starting to keep our our eye out now for the following year. That's great. 
And then you can refer to page on um, page 17 on our board book agenda. That's our HR business services, our fund balance report. That will go on the consent agenda. So if you want to take a minute and look at page 17, if anybody has any questions. As that will go on our consent agenda. Are there any questions for Simone at all? I have lots of questions, but <laughs> not about finance. Okay. <laughs> exactly. We've given our, um, given that we've been focusing on enrollment and things like that, did you have a change from that department? Yes, yes, we will talk about that. Great. That's exciting. So we'll move on next to the enrollment report, and I'm always happy to see you when we have more students um, in our buildings and what we budgeted for. No, it's great. Um, and to what, first to what John was referring to, yeah. Cattery has moved on to a super exciting opportunity. We've hired Kayla Carroll um, to that. be. <laughs> to be the new Mars coordinator, she's starting training, and Kateri has so graciously agreed to, um, you know, do training, and um, we have a contract with her. So we're very happy. I feel very confident that everything should be seamless. And she, Kateri, did provide these reports, and uh, will be helping us do our monthly reporting students. So great. Many thanks to Kateri for I, that. I will share that with her. Thank you very much. And then I know usually when we see December, there's a change of enrollment from December to January just because of graduations. Mm -hmm. When when do those usually show up in the enrollment report? Um, that might be February. February because she, she staggered her date so she could not only do this, but do a reporting that's on, there's a reporting on January 5th. Yeah. So that will all be reflected in February. In February? Yes. Perfect. So we can look forward to see how those numbers are going to, yes. we historically see a few fewer students just because we have seniors graduating. Mm -hmm. Correct. But the good news is the projected ADMs are up 105.61, so we're very happy about that. Do we have any questions on our enrollment report for this month? Awesome. Moving on to our child nutrition, nutrition departmental report. Graciously, what was it, November? We got a presentation from, our child, yep, from our child nutrition. For December, you can see the number of meals that the Duluth Public Schools serve. And Alana, this is of note for you, right, is that they're starting the after school meals program of Denfeld, because you always ask that question. This summer, yes. That's great. Are there any questions? Except excitement about starting on 1 4, we started our after school meal program at Denfeld, which is really exciting. And it is Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday? Okay. And that was a staffing problem previously. 100%. Yeah, that's there just great. simply wasn't getting them to do it. So we're making progress in our staffing shortages. Yes. That's great. Moving on, we have our facilities report. And hold on, Mr. Spooner. Let me guess. We're still in remediation for PSS Trap 1? Correct. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I, I think if the board desired, I could get our attorney to come into a closed board meeting in which we could discuss. I am hopeful that I'd have further news within two months, but I'm thinking if it goes beyond that, I'd like to bring Mark Minson in to a closed session. If the superintendent would like that, and then we can talk about where we're at. It, uh, it's not a stalemate, but it's a lot of going back and forth. So I'm, I'm still hopeful, but it's taken a long time. Yeah. After that. yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, I think that's something that this we can talk with the superintendent and see what his desire is for that, but sure. I, I agree for sure. And then as far as the balance of my report, I'm not sure it makes sense for me to read a line for line, but we've touched on a couple items, and that's the new contract. I'm hopeful that we generate some interest in filling custodial positions, and I, I feel good about that. The new construction is really coming along really quick. The DSC is looking Good. Transportation is looking good. Facilities is looking good. Central High School is completely down and they're separating the recyclable material into separate piles. So it's like a whole different, it's like the moon up there. There's 
wide open spot in inner space. So that's looking good. Um, work comp numbers are are available for those that want to read them below. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The change orders that we have um, for the Congen Park masonry and window is this still is this different than the change orders we looked at this last month? This is different month? than last month. This is coming up with the agenda later on, but I can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and talk about it? it now. Uh, this project initially was Congen Park window and masonry in 2019. And COVID severely impacted the ability of contractors to do work. So we ended up taking it from windows and masonry to masonry one year, windows turned into two years. And the proposal that MRJ Consultants gave us was for one year. And the $4,600 plus dollars is to cover the additional trips that they've made from Minneapolis to do site observation, construction management. And I, I agree, it's, it was really hard for them to manage or to, to know that it was going to be a three year project compared to a one year. And that's the sole reason for the change that I'm bringing forth uh, this month. Um, well, so the roughly $4,700, we're still look to be within our budget range for this project. If you take overall. the masonry and the windows, we're, it's like, Going off the top of my head, but we're roughly 200,000 under than anticipated for the two projects together from 19 to 22, three consecutive years. So we're under under the anticipated budget. That's great news. And I think was that the only change order that we had this month associated with any of the projects? So that would be um, under the consent agenda. Right. Okay. If I could add, uh, Mr. Spoon, uh, Spooner and I have talked about the uh, development of the work up on the hill, and I think that we're reaching a point that where it would be interesting for the board to maybe have another opportunity if you want to see our progress, and we can schedule some touring in the, in the next month or so. I'm thinking in the next four to six weeks, I, I think it would be best if the windows were in the DSC and they're going in right now, probably four weeks. It's pretty cluttered right now. I was in there yesterday and I think it might be there might be just too many hazards for us to be walking around <clears throat> well, right after the February break. That would probably work out well. Yeah, be excited. And just for the public, if anybody has any um, desire to see the progress, you can look in the board book and refer to page, I think it's like 24 of the of the agenda and everything and you can see some great pictures and all the progress the one that's crazy is looking at um central hill demo with it 90 percent being gone and right. just look just everything is down right now except for the boiler room and there's you know scattered piles of yeah. steel or concrete but it's it's far different than was the last time people were up there yeah i'm looking forward to seeing the change are there any questions for facilities? I do have a question about the Congen Park, Park playground construction. Um, is Are they going to be getting a, a playground that's similar to all of the other playgrounds that we have? Correct. We, in 2013, that was the only playground that was not updated. We, we added the climber and the swing set. And right now I'm evaluating if we can keep those two components, which I think we can. But our boiler play playground will be used as the basis for creating the, the new layout structure. And I'll be working with Kathy Marshall and the parent groups to ensure that they all agree with our plans before we bid that. But it'll be based on the district standard. Thanks. All right, thank you. And that's good news about this bed bathroom at the So are they currently using it right now? It's completed, and I would hope they're using yeah. it. <laughs> it, it was a long, 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 <laughs> long process. Right. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Spooner? And I think we covered the change order, and yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. So moving on next to our technology report. Yeah, um, for the technology report, I want to make one correction and one update and answering questions. Uh, so I had 7.5 emails were identified as 
spoofing. Actually, it's 75 I got a K in there. The K there. And then for E-rate bid, uh, actually we have a new bid out, uh, which replaced this one. It's 1316. Uh, we, we had a typo on our first bid. Uh, one of the vendors were bidding on it and had a question on it. Uh, we forgot an A in one of the part numbers. Uh, so you can't send an addendum out or anything like that with an E-rate. So we had to start from day one, repost it, so it's a whole new bid. Um, put the A in there as a part number. So it's 1316, uh, it's going to go to next month's um, meeting, as well as the school board for a review and approval. So. But this was the, we talked about this last month, there was only one bid that came in on this project. Uh, no, this is a new one. This oh, is this a new one? We okay. will be opening the bids. It was supposed to be open on January 24th. It got pushed back because we okay. have to have it posted for 28 days. So got it's it. going to be February 7th. Okay. So we have a placeholder um, business committee meeting. Uh, for next month. For next month. Okay. And then it's going to go to the school board. So it was already in place. Kathy already had that in place for, for the, the uh, bid from last, from last time as well. So it's going to go to the same Perfect. same meeting, same stuff. So we, have, we made the timeline. Uh, if there's any questions, I can answer any questions. I have a question. Under the, the technology report, um, it says 1.1 emails, email messages accepted or delivered. And then it says 1.2 million were identified as spam. That's all. So it's like 2.3 million emails were sent to us. Or 2.3 million. Yeah, total. Uh, okay. So we're getting double amount of spam. Yeah. Uh, they're just, right. we're just, 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 it feels like we're getting, and it's, but I just figured if we were spending a, a minute on each of those emails on average, because some are no time and some are 20 minutes, that's like four years of people's time spent on email. Yeah. It's a lot. Great. Are there any other questions regarding the technology report? Awesome. So now we move on to our tech. Uh, nope, to our transportation, and I just want to start out and thank our transportation department for the work that they've done through December. Um, so I read through our report, and is there just a quick clarification? So currently, okay, who is, what am I talking about? Just give me one second here. Who's in charge? Yes. <laughs> I, so um, our assistant transportation supervisor Jeremy Casapitas yeah, okay. has been in the position since the third week of November and has really stepped up and has been doing a wonderful job. Um, we've had some, you know, issues with snow and you know, that the roads have been tough. Yeah. And he's really, you know, had to learn some things, but he's doing a great job right. and we, um, uh, you will be approving uh, Steve Johnson's <laughs> resignation okay. in this, uh, in, towards the end here. Okay. And um, we are looking to replace the manager and then hire an, uh, you know, whoever else we need after that. But he did provide that um, in December we had a longtime driver who, a retiree, which brings us to no extra drivers and one helper short. So I, they're just, they're struggling, and sometimes everyone's out in a bus. Yep. Um, Glenn Jaden was hired on as a mechanic, which opens up another driver spot. And of course, we know about Steve Johnson. And bus maintenance, uh, scheduled maintenance has begun again with Glenn on the Good. fleet. And we have, he says, jump starts have occurred on a few occasions with early cold weather. General maintenance has also begun with the, having a mechanic again. And uh, Glenn is only able to work on buses between his route coverage at this time. So they are scrambling, and I want to thank our transportation department. They have really stepped up, and they're and doing the best they can. And it appears that Voyager is helping us quite a yeah. bit. Voyager as well. has been say, a great partnership. Yeah, uh, they've been amazing. They Please give them my mentorship. thanks. They're yeah. providing mentorship, yeah. and that's a great point too. They've really been a you know, they're a phone call away and they answer every time we call, so it's wonderful. That's hugely important. I just was, 
noticing on their staff thing, Steve Johnson is now gone and no replacement as of this writing. But I was yeah. like, Jeremy, you wrote this. You're being yeah. <laughs> Jeremy's handling it. Jeremy's yes, handling he's doing it. Great job. He, yeah. It's. I want like again the whole entire transportation department yeah, has been just, doing an amazing job. The superintendent wrote a lovely email, yep. and when I spoke with Jeremy Casapitas about it, he was printing it and putting on the bar board for those that don't have, you know, don't check their don't emails, check their email. school emails, and putting it on the board where they could all read it. And he said that was just a great boost uh, That's awesome. to the department. So thank you. We're thank also you. meeting with the city uh, next week with city officials from the, um, the following uh, City Works group as well as the mayor and myself, as well as uh, members of our team, just to make sure that things are as well coordinated as possible um, during during winter snow issues. And yeah. So one thing I think that we want to do is, is make sure that there's uh, more, I guess I'd call it kind of preventative communication so that, that before, before a storm, we know where the city is at. I think this time we, we got caught in kind of a hard place where the snow had stopped and many of the streets were cleared, but there was so much excess snow that it was hampering, in, particularly in, in uh, uh, Oregon Park and Gary New Duluth and the Harbor Highlands that they, they simply weren't in a place where they were caught up. So we, we, I think that they, the improvements in process will be welcomed. And I would say that uh, the city has owned what they need to improve on and we own that uh, having more communication prior to deciding I also think it might be um, beneficial because you hear a lot of like, well, why doesn't Duluth just do a two hour late start? And there's things that prevent us from having that option operationally. That that's just not an option for us. So I think that's important. I, I did last uh, April, there was a snow day I called and it turned out to be not such a horrible day. And so in my weekly update, I provided like a kind of a longer explanation of how we call those weather events and it might not hurt for us to do an update now too for, for families so that yeah, they, that'd be great. they understand why we do things and why we don't. Today was a rough day too with the freezing rain. Yeah. Is, are they affected by power shortages or anything like that? Um, the city? Do they have, I mean, are they fully staffed and have, have enough trucks that kind of stuff or is it? I'm not totally sure of their, okay. like where they're at. I, well, personally, looking out my window, I see them plowing all the time, and they work working pretty hard. And, and uh, we'll ask next week. It's a great we question. We ask next week. It's hard sometimes as a property owner to keep clearing the end of the driveway. But it's part of part of life. Part of life. Right? Yeah, I, I know Voyager is in the same boat we are. They're down to every driver out too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's even worth it that. Um, we compare our you know our bus roads to to their schedules of how the, how and where they plow too. I mean, that's actually that's something we did. We uh, we shared the maps of our bus routes with the city so that they can focus first on bus routes after they focus on the emergency snow yeah. routes. So second. Yeah, that's great. Look forward to hearing how that meeting goes. Um, moving on to our I, oh yes, I, I have a factoid here. Related to transportation, this is, I was reading an article in the Sierra Club's national publication about trying to get an electric school bus in West Virginia, and they're meeting a lot of uh, political resistance. But going on through that, this this paragraph kind of struck me that uh, medium to heavy vehicles, which include school buses, cause most of the transportation-related air pollution in the U.S. There are twice as many school buses as there are public buses, trains, and airplanes combined in the U.S. Wow. I mean, there are a lot. And so there's going to be more pressure from a variety of people to get electric school buses, which cost about $300,000 a piece. I mean, they're not cheap. But anyway, that's just a fact right about that a There are that many school buses, we don't think about that. Right. But they all run on diesel. Diesel is not the most clean thing, and that's that's a big problem. So. Uh, on a somewhat related note, with our legislative platform that we just uh, completed with conversation with the board, uh, just to remember that we are focusing on uh, 
asking for additional funding for related to uh, solar projects, so fully funding solar projects, as well as having EV uh, charging outlets in, at our properties. And I think along with that, there could be further conversation around electric buses and things like that. I know that the transportation center that we've put together, uh, we we have it set up so that there are conduits provisions so to it already so that we're ready if we if we need to move in that direction. Up and down the hills in the cold weather. Yes. I'm sure there will be some at the I was convention thinking, yeah. and there are always school buses. We'll see what they're see what they're like. But they're expensive and even though you can get rebates I think with the federal legislation that was just passed, it's still anyway so that's just a, a factor. I think, I think it would be something that you nice if we can continue to take steps in that direction. Yeah. Thank you, Member Kirby. Are there other questions? Moving on to our recommended resolutions, we have our acceptance of donations. And I just want to take a moment here and thank a couple, thank everybody who's donated to the Duluth Public Schools, but it appears that Timothy Nelson and A&L Properties have given a tremendous amount for the ALC um, student holiday auction. So I just want to, um, point out that they've done some great work for our students at ALC. We will be taking off the release and pledge of collateral. That's resolution on um, page 13. We approved that, uh, yep, we approved that at the organizational meeting, so this will not show up in for our regular school board meeting. But the next resolution, our acceptance of grant awards to the Duluth Public School will. And just to bring one back to our previous meeting on here is a resolution to accept a grant from the Minnesota Department of Transportation Safe Route to Schools for $45,000 for Congdon Park Elementary for a safe route to school plan. So that's really exciting. And work um, that we are working on, work that we're working on. That's really profound. Okay. <laughs> So those are the two resolutions that we'll be bringing forward to the full school board meeting in a couple weeks. On our consent agenda, we have our HR staffing report, and that is included on there is the resignation, right, of our transportation, um, of our transportation director. Um, next, we have finances, our financial report, um, and Simone talked about that during her Presentation, also the fundraising reported, and Lester Park did some great fundraising there. Um, next, moving on, we have no bids, RFP, or quotes this month, but we do have a change order regarding Compton Park um, Elementary School masonry and windows that Mr. Spooner spoke about earlier. As we move on to miscellaneous informational items, we talked about the district property update and Mr. Spooner's update for facility, the facilities departmental report. Um, moving on to our expenditure contracts. Um, we have some expenditure contracts signed with University Nursery School, CDW <coughs> Government. Or can, does this have to do with our technology? This um, CWC government LLC ISD recently migrated to a PA fifty four ten. Uh yes. That's our that's our firewall. Oh okay. Yep, our firewall filtering for the district. Perfect. So it was an E rate bid from last year. Okay. So they changed the scope of work that they needed. Uh, so it's less. So it's less. It's less, and they wanted a new statement of work and new contract signed. Great, thank you, Bart. We also have um, Duluth Area Family YMCA. This is so our students attending ALC and AEO can access physical education credits through the YMCA. That's a great partnership that we made um, as we moved to ALC. And we have some consulting on MTSS, and then always love to see the stuff having to do with reading and math. So that's great. So those are our expenditure contracts. We have no, no, no cost contracts this month. When we move on to our revenue contracts, let's get 
Um, we have a contract with St. Louis County Youth in Action and then the Northland Foundation. So those two are revenue contracts and then our grant applications are next, are page 70. And our grant application um, have to do with several, a pollinator garden, that's great. And then some work with the Minnesota State Colleges and University, Minnesota Department of Education, having to do with the Come Teach in Minnesota. This is where we try to get teachers, um, American Indian teachers or people of color to come to Minnesota and teach in our schools. Um, there's another for a Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and the Minnesota Agricultural Education Leadership Council. So those are our grants for this month, and then we have no change orders signed. Are there any questions over any of the information that we just talked about? That concludes this month's HR Business Services Committee meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.